now it's time for Stuart Varney, who is in the power rotation of guests here on the I'm a Swain program. Why is he in the power rotation? Well, one, he's a great guest. Two, he comes with his own topic. So when we book him, we don't have to do, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to think about what to ask him. I don't have to, all I have to hope is that he shows up well-groomed <laughs> and with the same energy that he displays on his own program, and he does that. So please welcome to the program, the aforementioned Stuart Varney. Good morning, Mr. Varney. Good morning, Imus. In all the years I've been working with you, that is the finest introduction I've ever had, and I, I'm deeply flattered, Imus. Thank you very much indeed. Not so fast, tractor boy. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> is, um, do you have a photograph of yourself on your on your iPhone case? Oh, you've seen it. Yes, I haven't seen I it. Yes, I do. Yes, that's me. Uh, our viewers can see it. Our listeners cannot. But that yes. is me on the back of my iPhone case. Correct. Why? Uh, narcissism, I guess. <laughs> no other explanation for it. Actually, the, the viewers cannot see it, but that is a picture. Uh, you can't, not, not detailed enough. That is a picture of me shopping in Michael's, which is a craft store. Oh my sure. God! Oh now, my God. Nothing sure, could really. be un more unlikely than me a shopping and b in Michael's, a craft store. But nonetheless, a picture of me was snapped, taken by my kids, put on the back of my iPhone as a Christmas present, and you got hold of it, I must. Well done. Well, I didn't get a hold of it. You know, who got a hold of it is Nat Candino. Yeah, I know. I know. Our star, our very rotund stage manager and member of. And her suit. Vinny from, uh, yes, <laughs> Vinny from Queen. So, anyway, yeah, Harry Bastard. Anyway. <laughs> I figured Barney uh, would appreciate that word. You know, uh, Connell had an interesting statistic this morning, or maybe it was Bernard, and that is Fox News did a poll. And uh, the respondents uh, uh, weighed in, uh, s s suggesting that they thought that the prisoners in Guant Guantanamo Bay got better medical care than, than our veterans do. Yeah. Did you see that? I did. What yeah. do you think of that? Um, what do I think of it? It's a disgrace. Um, and I'm sure it's true. Uh, Guantanamo Bay, I've never been. But those who have been say it is a model institution, complete with all kinds of aid and assistance to the terrorists that we keep there. And it is an outrage that they should get better medical treatment than the men and women who fought against them and have now come back to America. I mean, this, this is simply outrageous. From a practical standpoint, I mean, a number of people have, had the have made the suggestion that why don't we give these veterans uh, vouchers? Yes. Yes. Uh, and allowing them to go to any hospital. That's it. Well, is there well, is there some reason we can't do that? Some practical reason? Or? Oh, no, there, there's no practical reason. There is an ideological and political reason. What if would that President, be? well, look, if President Obama were to say, "Yeah, the system ain't working. Government provision of health care for vets ain't working. So we'll turn to private enterprise." If he said that. If he said, yeah, okay, let's give him a voucher. Get out there and go to any hospital you like. That would be a complete reversal of the president's entire approach to governing and his entire ideological approach because he would be saying, government doesn't work, private enterprise does work. He will never do that, ever. He will you never reverse course on his central <laughs> theme. You know, you know what's really stunning? <laughs> Is there, yeah, I get you various guys on this program. <laughs> There is no question that I can ask you or a, a couple of other people who appear here who you can't turn it into an opportunity to bash our president. Okay, it's, hold on. It, it, it's it, it's, it's mind-boggling. I've got one. Yeah. I've got one. A few moments ago, you showed video of President Obama working out. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to turn that against the president. I think okay. the, the guy looked great. That yes. was a pretty good workout. I no. was surprised, however, because for the first time I saw the President of the United States taken out of context. You're used to seeing him in the Rose Garden or the sure. Oval Office or at a press conference, but suddenly sure. here he is working out. He's lifting weights. I mean, that was a shock. It reminded me, Imus, if I may drone on for a second. Of it course. reminded me, <laughs> I'm going to, it reminded me of 40, 50 years ago, some video of Queen Elizabeth buying an ice cream in a country store. That was a shock, because for the first time, they saw the Queen taken out of context of the throne and the monarchy, buying an ice cream, chatting with the store owner. That was different, and I thought exactly the same thing about President Obama in his workout room. 
How's Thank that? you for sharing that idiotic anecdote with us <laughs> <laughs> and droning on as you are wont to do. Quarter till the hour talking with uh, Stuart Varney, who for some reason, well, so did I, liked Don Zimmer. Tell me about that. Ah, oh, to me, uh, I remember Don Zimmer. I remember that picture of him wearing the helmet. Uh, he'd been beanballed, I think. He, no, he'd getting hit by a foul, uh, a foul ball in the dugout. Do you know what happened? Uh, yes. Um, okay. he, you know you it was 1999. It was a foul ball. It had come either close to him. I know it had hit him in the head. That's right. Yeah. It had hit him in the head. Yeah. He then subsequently appeared in a helmet, uh, made fun of himself, made fun of the game, and made everybody laugh and endeared him to the hearts of Yankee fans. To me, I know he managed the Boston Red Sox, I think it was, and a team out of Florida. I know he managed them, but well, he will always, to me, be a Yankee and a great guy in baseball. How's that? Did you ever meet him? No. No, I did not. No. no. Well, it's just it's always interesting to know the people you like and the ones who you don't. <laughs> so on an uh, economic note, Seattle, oh. city of Seattle, has voted for a $15 per hour minimum wage. Uh, do you think, uh, what do you think of that? Ridiculous. Why? <laughs> are we now starting to legislate wages? Are we? Yes, we are. Oh, we're not just legislating a minimum wage. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to have politicians tell us what is a, limit, a, a living wage. <laughs> Do you think that all those people who have their... <laughs> you're laughing. I can t I, well, I'm no, looking them up. I, I know you're laughing. But wait a I minute. Just, uh, Do you think the people who are going to have their wages doubled, because that's what's going to happen, you think right. they're worth it? What have they done for that? What did they do to get a doubling of their wages? Oh, they simply voted for the right politician who will give it to them, taken out of somebody else's pocket. That's not the way America should be going. Uh, if I may digress one more time, that's the way Obama wants to take us, <laughs> where the legislator, you legislate <laughs> higher wages. You tell them, oh, you've got to You're pay them a living yeah. wage. You are a wretched individual. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> my God. You are dripping with wretchedness. Uh, so. Badge of honor. <laughs> We'll, wa <laughs> we'll all watch you if, remember to, if we remember to turn our televisions back on at 11 a.m. this morning on the Fox <laughs> <laughs>